We seem to live on the brink of things at the moment, of warmongering, of pushing one side to see how far they will go, of brinkmanship. It is our lowest form of relationship, when you see folk not just as enemy, but worth provoking, simply to see how they will play. Global headlines illustrate this, but we do it regularly in Parliament and in the church, in our communities, families even. But there is a word that cuts across that, a holy word, that is uneasy in the world and subverts our easy norms. Today, we speak it. Hello, I'm Roddy Hamilton, the Minister of New Patrick Parish, and once more, thank you for your invitation to join together again in worship today. Over the last few weeks, we've found ourselves in different places. We've been in the synagogue, we've been by the beachside, we've been on the plain, and heard Jesus preach almost the same message each time. Freedom to the oppressed, good news to the poor, sight to the blind. Listen, repeat, listen, repeat. Today we are still on that plane, just moments after Jesus has blessed the poor and cursed the rich. And if that was hard to hear, <laughs> it doesn't get a lot better. Loving enemies, turning the other cheek, handing over not just your coat, but your inner garment too. From all those dreams and visions of what the kingdom will be like, now comes the nitty gritty. <laughs> so would you like to just turn over to another channel now? Or are you intrigued enough to see or listen to what Jesus has yet to say? Creating God, may we anticipate good. May we live expecting the right thing to happen. May we live as people of hope, who see the best in folk and shape our community here in such generosity. May we let go the anger that hurts others, the pain that fear brings. May we lay down a hatred of the other because of difference and a culture that tells us to turn away because of history or gender or prejudice. And in the middle of these, between the generosity of life and the making of enemies, 
may we turn towards the hurt, be they foe or friend. May we turn towards the broken, be they least or most. May we turn towards the rejected, be they enemy or companion. In love. Loving God, may our religion turn folk into friends rather than enemies. May our faith be open and generous towards the least. And may our beliefs never prejudice us, warn us or turn us away from those we have been told are other than us. For when you weep, O God, in the twisting of our religion, all heaven breaks. And may we weep with you. Hear us as we say the global prayer together. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The words we will hear Jesus speak about love and enemies will be some of his most familiar. We have spoken them frequently. But when you hear them in our own context, they sound quite different from their original. Perhaps they are universal, but only in intent. How we live them out is the difficult question. Today, Christianity and Christians, probably the majority, have access to political power. We vote, we can be elected, we can organise community protests as people of faith, unlike Jesus or the Jewish community of his time. Jesus' social context in which he said these words is not our own. How you hear these words of Jesus is different now from then, where these were acts of non-violent peaceful protest at a system that kept people in their place. The literal approach is not so useful to us now as the context is very different. But how these examples of Jesus serve us is to invite a way of uncrusting the hardened ways of responding with hatred and revenge and show a more moral way of rebalancing relationships, meeting force with ridicule. But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful.
what we have read today is such an iconic passage, yet such a high ideal, love your enemy. In some way, it is surprising it is there in the Bible because it is such a pluralistic book. And as many times as you hear the phrase, love your enemy, you will hear three times more stories and reports of religious violence towards others in the same book. It is only a few sentences after the good book begins that Cain and Abel fall out and one is murdered. A single breath thereafter, we hear how the world is filled with violence and God, who has hardly had long enough to grow a beard, almost abandons everything with the, the worst line, most cutting line in the Bible. God regretted that humanity had been made and God's heart was filled with pain. That kind of stops you in your tracks. God regrets making us. Of course, we grow up from there. The rest of the history of the Bible tells the story of humanity growing wiser and more mature, enough that such phrases as love your enemy become part of our language and morality and even system of rules. <laughs> Yet, we live a double life, longing for that to be true, but experiencing the very opposite. Religion has a terrible history of killing in the name of God, or prejudice in the name of God, or rejection, slavery, apartheid in the name of God. And in amongst all the loudest prejudices, excuses and enemies religion chooses to name, God can hardly be heard saying, do not use my name for that. But there are places in the Bible and there and they are still more memorable words that offer us a phrase, a word that cuts through the heart with the word love your enemy, turn the other cheek, give to the one who takes your coat, your garment also. Now we can explore each of these individually and perhaps we should, but sometimes we lose the bigger picture when we argue the details. What Jesus is actually doing here is change the way we do relationships. Jesus is breaking down the ways we define people in our society when we place them in a clan or a caste or a socio-economic group and define them from there. He is opening up the fissure that has been there for generations. The gap between us that tradition and culture and wealth and empire have created and offers us a way to expose the injustice of our relationships non-violently. What Jesus offers is not rules. These are examples, not legislative acts. It is a message that there is no room in the kingdom for tribal or cultural or economic barriers. The idea of loving your enemy is a powerfully ambitious ethic. Behind it is a very simple idea. Your enemy is also a human being. A decent society is one where enemies do not allow their fear or hatred of each other be their own undoing. And that undoing has been witnessed often in the history of the world and is happening even now. When we enshrine hatred, fear towards a group of people, refugees or other religions or someone of a different sexuality or a different political party, which is what populism willingly and readily does, when we concentrate hate towards a particular group and we all unite against that group, society becomes less, as does our humanity, as does our God. When we are held captive by such anger or hatred, some enemy, we remain captive. This is not freedom. Those who let their enemies define them are not free. What we can be instead, and what we always work towards in this place, and what Jesus is offering here, is to be the love in the hatred, the sanctuary in the pogrom, 
the place where we seek to rebalance our relationships and present the possibility of a way of life defined around the virtues of love, grace and reconciliation. <laughs> Put simply, what Jesus is inviting us to do is see people as God sees people. Just to put down a marker that love does not make us doormats and loving our enemies does not invite us to love silence when we should speak out. When Jesus talks of turning the other cheek, you have to place yourself in the culture of that time. A slave owner would humiliate his or her slave with a backhanded slap with his or her right hand across the right cheek of the slave. Turning the other cheek, offering your left cheek, means the slave over cannot use the right dominant hand but has to use the left hand, the one that is used for lesser things, that is culturally dirty. Thus, turning the other cheek is about seizing the moral initiative taking control of the power dynamic. It's saying, your action cannot humiliate me, but it can humiliate you. In other words, Jesus was initiating a counter-cultural community that sought to change systems with non-violence. Thus, the ethic to love enemies is not to just accept things, but to turn the tables of hatred with love. So when we hear of folk who are abused, there is nothing here that says that we sh that should not be called out. Or people caught in systemic prejudice or misogyny, there is nothing here that says we should not enable folk to take control of the abuse of power. The love ethic, as Jesus shows it in turning the other cheek, is an example of turning the tables on the enemy, calling them out and offering another way to live.
Thank you for your invitation to join you again today. We are online as always at nkchurch.org.uk and our diary is there for you to engage with us whenever you can on Zoom. And the links for Zoom are in the bulletin and in the order of service, which you get if you come along to a Sunday morning. But you can subscribe to the bulletin by mailing emailing the church office at mail at nkchurch.org.uk and we can send that out to you by email or we can do that by post as well. Coming up on Friday the 4th of March is the World Day of Prayer. That's in the Cross Church and we invite you to attend that if you can. That's 11 o'clock on Friday. And then our usual weekday events, Sing Song on Tuesday this week at 2 o'clock, on Zoom Quiz Night on Tuesday at 7 o'clock, Sofa Surfers on Thursday at 7 o'clock, and that's our own version of Through the Keyhole. And then on Friday we have Coffee Pot at 10.30. I invite you to join us any time on at these events. And then we're back to Sunday again. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you for letting us join you. Let us gather our thoughts and our prayers together in our prayers for others. Let us pray. Loving God, may we draw the world here and find ourselves the folk called to love our enemy in the midst of conflict. May we be the folk you long for us to be. And in doing so, offer light to the world, kindle peace in conflict, shape sanctuary amid prejudice. Yet, loving God, may we move away from one-size-fits-all, supposing this way of loving, of turning the other cheek, of giving not just our outer garment but inner one also, means we become doormats to abuse and oppression and structural prejudice. Loving God, may we live in the freedom love brings to us all, the sense that we are set up against war and conflict that we define ourselves not by who our enemies are, but how we live towards them. And so we place here in the heart of our prayer the pantomime of might where Ukraine is caught in the middle. The fear leaders have who create conflict and care not for the people between them in Syria, Yemen, Tigray. For populism that creates an enemy out of a minority and gathers fear and hatred around them, such as refugees, those with mental health issues, the poor. For a misogyny that is still ingrained in our language, our society, our religion, that appears so hard to change. In all these ways, O oh God, may we turn the other cheek, draw attention to the injustice for the sake of the kingdom. And in that place, reshaped by love, may we create a place for all and a right living for all, where we can bring our families and friends, the least and the lost, those ill physically and mentally, those in crisis and worried and fearful about the future, and pray for them and love them and be companions with them. Loving God, in love, hear us. So be it. Amen.
in peace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the common life of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>